Welcome to Tasting the City. I'm your host, Terry Hopkins. And today we're in Den Eden and we're at 933 Huntley Avenue and we're at Clotherman Distillery, one of the few distilleries around this whole area. And today we're going to take a taste of some spirits, I guess. So, hey, follow me. Let's go in and take a look. Hi, welcome to Clotherman Distilling. I'm Mike. Hey, Mike, thank you. Hey, welcome to our distillery. Uh, we're the first uh, distillery in Dunedin. Uh, we're technically the first distillery to be operating in Pinellas. Wow. Um, in well over 100 years since our uh, prohibition. Uh, <laughs> we make right now, we make a vodka. Uh, all of our products right now are made from uh, barley malt, malted barley. Uh, this is to be in synergy with the local brewers who uh, have the facilities to turn a malted grain into basically a beer. So what we have here in our 727 vodka is a uh, single malt vodka. It starts Ooh. off with the same malted barley that you'd start off with a single malted uh, whiskey with. Uh, we just distill it more. So the ingredients in this are, are way more expensive than you'd normally have in a, a typical off-the-shelf vodka, and every bit of it is handmade. Wow. Every step of the way, handmade, hand-labeled, hand-bottled, hand-tested, and uh, hand-sampled. So. Well, let's try a little taste of this. Well, let me try a little bit of this. So what you'll notice in the aroma is, is, um, a, mm. is, is a little bit of the malt, a hint of malted barley. You yeah. shouldn't be able to get too much because vodka by law should not have a discernible taste or flavor. Yeah. That's smooth, very smooth. So it's 80 proof, which is the minimum for, for vodka. Um, this is our batch number four. Uh, typical batch for us is five to 10 cases. Um, hopefully we'll be making larger batches pretty soon, but we really want to get our, our procedure and recipe down pat so that we uh, can have consistency. And once we have that consistency, we'll, we'll make larger batches, maybe 20 cases at a time, and then we'll go into distribution. Wow. So 727 is? 727 is our area code. Oh, I thought it was something secret, secret number. <laughs> no, and you'll notice the outline, there's an outline of Pinellas County. When I first yeah, moved here, that's it. I, they gave me an 813 area code number, and about a week later, they, gave, they changed the, the first three digits on the area code to 727, so all my friends, I had to tell them another new phone number. Oh, so the 727 memorializes our area code. Yes. For Pinellas County. And it's, the area code started the same year I moved to Florida. Ah, okay. About 20 years ago. So a, a tie-in to all of this. Now, how did you get started with, how did you even think about making a distillery? So I've been a home brewer for quite a while, and I went out to uh, Denver, Colorado to my cousin's wedding. And my stepmom happened to be with me, and we decided to go on a few brewery tours. And we were at Flying Dog Brewery out in Denver when they were still there. They've since moved to the East Coast. And they said, are you going to go visit the distillery next door? And I was like, distillery? Sure. And we went over, and that, that was Stranahan's. They make Stranahan's whiskey, which almost everybody knows of now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we learned that they got their beer from next door. They took the beer and put it in one still, then they ran it into another still, and then they put it in barrels for two years. And they let us smell inside the first barrel. It had everybody's names written on it from the distillery. And it was, you know, wonderful smell. And then they, they had batch number two in bottles that I bought at $60. And I, was like, and I tasted it, and I was like, I'm going to do this. And that was nine and a half years ago now. So that was 06, May of 06. So here we are nine years later, we have our own distillery open. So what's the biggest difference between a uh, brewery and a distillery? So the biggest difference I'd say is the, the learning curve and the legality of doing it at home. Uh -huh. Since prohibition, it's been illegal to run a still at home. So a lot of people, you know, don't do it. There are some people, you know, moonshiners and bootleggers that, that do it and learn. But America really lost a lot of intelligence and, and culture around distilling. There's, you know, before then, people made their own bread. They made their own soda. They made their own whiskey. Whiskey was a form of, of trade. Yeah. Um, foreign countries, Europe, never stopped, never had prohibition. So they didn't have that. They, they really were on top of us also in the beer industry. And now American beer has taken over. Well, hopefully American craft spirits will follow the same, the same path. Oh, okay. So we also have a lot more. We have double the tax and double the regulation. Uh, we have requirements such as fire sprinklers because we are dealing with a flammable product. 
Oh, yeah. I've never seen beer burn. Technically, beer can burn at 140 degrees. <laughs> if you heat up beer and the vapor coming off it, you can light that. That's a now, breweries get an exemption because any alcohol under 20%, they get an exemption in the fire and building codes. Ah. But technically, beer is flammable at the right temperature. Wow, that'd be a pretty hot beach at 140 degrees. Yes, but, <laughs> but in, a, in a facility where you were making it, if you were heating it, well, yeah. you, you could get you, a little warm. So and with breweries, the most dangerous thing nowadays in, in a distillery, if they do it, is grain, is the powder from the grain uh, being explosive. Well, this is wonderful stuff, very smooth. Thank you, thank you very much. Our next, our next thing is, is gin. Um, the gin is but called half, it's called half mine. It's uh, because my my wife owns half the business. Oh, okay. <laughs> the better the better half, and as always. <laughs> yeah. So the gin should be out before Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and then we're also working on a, a moonshine, which will be similar to this, but probably a little more rustic, uh, a little more flavor coming through. Because, like I said, with the vodka, yeah, you're this not is really to have smooth. Much there's not much of a flavor. There. Yeah. So we'll get a lot more flavor, and that would be. Moonshine. I hate. I hesitate to use the word moonshine because moonshine really means we didn't pay taxes on it. Yeah. Well, we're going to pay taxes on it, so it's technically moonshine's a stretch. Yeah. And then we just uh, barreled our first whiskey, our first single malt whiskey. Um, that should be ready. I'd say 18 months. We did three 15-gallon barrels, just like the barrel that's uh, that's over here. Uh, it also is single malt barley. Even though we are Dunedin, we are a Scotch town, you can't call it Scotch, right? We can't call it Scotch. We can use the terms, uh, single. we can use single malt, but really it's malt whiskey is, a, is the term, national yep. term. So we can have malt whiskey, we can have straight malt whiskey, which uh, puts a few more requirements on it. No artificial colorings, aged for a certain amount of time. Uh, then you could have light whiskey, which could be aged in a... It aged mm -hmm. in a used barrel, which would be similar to Scotch. So if I were to make a Scotch, I would have to say Scottish style, made in Dunedin, <laughs> and then underneath would have to say light whiskey. And actually that font would have to be a little larger. There's a lot of rules on labeling. And once you see them, you can't undo that knowledge when you go into the liquor store because you look at the label and you see, the, you see how they accommodated with the TTB's labeling requirements. Yeah. So this has to say in large words, vodka. You could say a lot of other words around it, but it has to state what it is. And then there are rules as to the proof. Uh, so our whiskey, we, we whiskey we made, uh, we went in uh, conjunction with the new Tampa Bay Brewing Company out in West Chase, Oldsmar area. Mm -hmm. And they produced our malt, uh, malted barley wort, to make our whiskey from. They basically made us sugar water. We brought it here, we fermented it with our yeast, and then distilled it several times and filled the barrel. Uh, the batch of this, 727, this came from Barley Mow down in Largo on one of their batches. We, we so, you, so you buy the wort from yes. the breweries to bring here to start making? Until we, can, until we want to buy grain handling equipment. Yeah. And these places just built huge 30 barrel, you know, 30 barrels oh, yeah. about 1,000 gallons, 1,000 yeah. gallon breweries. So it works really synergistic. We pay them, they make us sugar water. It's basically unhopped, unfermented beer. Excellent. And we transfer it unfermented because we don't need a, a, to do a transferred bond. Once it's alcohol, transferring it requires a lot yeah. more legal stuff. Hmm. Well, I learned something. Um, so another thing about, about distilleries recently is there's been a lot of legislative help from the state. Uh, prior to July of 2013, I could not sell you a bottle out of this store. I could give you samples and give you a tour. Then in July of 2013, the state allowed us to sell two bottles per person per year under a tourism clause. Mm -hmm. Now that may not sound like very much, two per person per year, but if you're in a touristy area, that's that's a lot of bottles. Yeah. So then um, in the last bill that went around, many, many people with breweries are familiar with the Growler Bill. Well, at the yep. end of the Growler Bill was a provision that changed that from two bottles total to two bottles of every brand. So if we have three or four brands, people could buy two or three bottles of those brands every year. Our plan is to have a new brand every two or three months so that a person could come back in and buy the bottle or two of that brand. And then next year, we might bring that brand out one more time. Mm -hmm. um, it'd be nice to have 10 brands on the shelf so that somebody could, if they came in once a month to visit us and came on a tour, they could, they could buy a bottle. Wow. But if they want quantities higher than that, we want to support the local businesses like Lucan's. 
So they will be our primary uh, reseller. Yeah. But to also, we have to get into distribution to have it available in bars and, and restaurants. So we'll be heading there as soon as we can. As soon as you can. Okay. You want to give us a little tour of the brewery? Show what it looks like at the brewery, a distillery. So this is, uh, right now, according to the law, we're in a non-distillery area. Okay. Uh, according to the federal government, it has to be separate. So, so this is our distilling area. Uh, this is what's called a bonded premises. So anything that we make alcohol in here before it leaves here, we have a bond with the state and with the federal government that covers taxes in case that alcohol were to disappear before we paid taxes on it. Um, so in this bonded area is where we, where we make things. In these, in these containers here are, are wort, fermented wort or beer. We will take it out of those containers and we will place it into the still right here that's behind you and, and, run, it, and run it through. We, it is heated with heating elements down here. We have an automatic control panel um, over here. And basically what we'll do is we'll heat it up to uh, a simmer and what will simmer off is the alcohol will leave, leave first. Um, the alcohol that comes off first also has a lot of other undesirable components in it. So for a vodka, we send it through multiple plates. This particular uh, kind of still is a column still with what they call bubble cap plates. You can't see because of the condensation, you can kind of see all the little copper things in there. Those are bubble caps. Yeah. And what those do is those make a layer of liquid that the vapor has to go through and it gives off the alcohol where, and the water condensates back down and, and drips back down. So at every plate we refine it almost like you were distilling it a whole nother time. Wow. So in this still there's 24 plates. Uh, the, the alcohol that will come out of this is extremely pure yet uh, and void of the, the bad chemicals and esters and other things like that, but still has a little tiny bit of flavor. By law, to make vodka, when it comes out of here, it has to come out at 190 proof or above. If it doesn't come out at 190 proof, you can't turn that into vodka until you redistill it again. For whiskey, we would, we would reconfigure this and only use three or four plates, and we would bring the whiskey off at maybe 160 proof or so, and it would have a lot more flavor. Then we would, then we would put it into the barrels. Hmm. Wow. So af after it's distilled and you've got this alcohol at 190 proof, what do you do with it then? So at 190 proof, we, we uh, for the federal government, we gauge it, um, get the strength, then we do calculations based on it, uh, the temperature and the proof to bring it down in a, in a mixing tank. We would mix that down to uh, 80 proof or 40% alcohol. Yeah. Now the temperature is very critical. The government has charts that, are, that are, were printed in 1913 that are still used today. Wow. So if you want to if you want to write a program, you basically input the data from this 1913 chart, and then it has whole degrees and whole uh, percents of proof. So if I was at 190 proof, that is technically 190 percent of proof. If I was at if I want to get down to 80.0 proof, and I'm at say 86.2 degrees, I would look at the chart and see what it is at 190.0, well it says 100, and it may say 193, 194 on my, on my gauge because the temperature is above what the calibration is. So we have to do a calibration. Now we have to do it to a tenth of a degree and a tenth of a proof. Well the charts don't have that so we have to interpolate. It's a double interpolation, it's a little bit of a complex formula. And the tools we use, you know, you imagine a tenth of a degree with a thermometer and a tenth of a degree with a, a hydrometer require calibrated instruments and they do. Yeah. So the, the thermometer uh, and, and hydrometer are, are about 100 bucks, 150 bucks each uh, without calibration. The calibration is double the, usually double that price. So you're talking a $300 piece of glass you're holding in your hand when you put it in there to measure it. So mm. you don't want to break it. Um, so we do that. When you bring it down to 80%, if you overshoot, it's hard to uncorrect. So you usually take a couple a couple yeah. stabs at it, and you start it, trying to get it down to 82. And then so you're adding water to it? We're adding a very uh, uh, purified water. We okay. run it through a, a carbon filter very slow, and the water tastes beautiful. The actual water is actually available in our gift shop in a drinking fountain. Oh. So people can rinse out their cup and taste that, and wow. they can taste our water. 
Um, we also so share that water with homebrewers. If home I want to do or... self-diluting, I could just drink enough water then and then I could Yeah, then you could drink the 180. Yeah, okay. But not in Florida. I'm, I'm getting it. I'm not a chemist, but I'm getting this. I'm in getting Florida, it. the strongest you can have, I believe, is 155 or 154 proof. Um, so everything we do is 80. Um, our gin will be a little stronger for other reasons. Our whiskey will probably be a little stronger than the 80 proof. Um, so once we do that, then we gauge, we gauge the 80 proof and we measure how much we have. And they me the government measures it in proof gallons. So if you had one gallon of 100 proof, it'd be one proof gallon. Well, if you have a gallon of, five gallons of 80 proof, that's not really, it's a little, it takes a little more math. Yeah. You figure that out. You have to be accurate to within a tenth of a gallon. And every time you do something, if I take it from there and I put it into a container and I move that container to there, all that has to be documented. Every movement of your spirits has to be documented. So, so when it goes into a barrel, I have to document what date went in the barrel, what spirit, what, what, what spirit it is in a barrel. My name has to be on the barrel, um, and, and several other, other things, what batch it came from. So it's a bookkeeper's nightmare, is what you're saying. It's a lot of work. We're a one-person shop, so I'm doing all the bookkeeping. Oh, okay. But if you were to go to a liquor store and you look on, you go get one of the empty cases and you look on it, it'll have the distillery number, yeah. you know, how many proof gallons are in there, everything about that. And now if you were to go to the distillery, if you had a problem with that case of liquor, the federal government requires that you keep records. You could go back to the distillery, and they could tell you what batch of grain, what truck came in with that batch of grain, what batch of bottles came from that. Wow. You really, have, you have to keep that to go backwards wow. with all wow. that. So it's it's a lot of paperwork. I spend a lot more time with paperwork than I do distilling, unfortunately. <laughs> so, don't we all? Don't we all? Don't yes. we all? Well, thank you for the tour, Michael. You're very welcome. Now, tell me, do you have a website? Uh, we have a website, but it really just redirects to our Facebook page. So if okay. you go to CotherinDistilling.com, it will redirect you to Facebook, uh, Cotherman Distilling. On there, we'll have all of our releases of for when our gin is going to be available, when we add additional hours to our gift shop, because we're only open four to eight on Friday, which isn't very much. We'd like to add in Saturday next, okay. and we open earlier on Friday for to be in combination with the green market. Oh, so okay. hopefully that'll be very soon. As soon as we get... Two products, I'd like to be open two days. We get three products, I'd like to be open three days. So wow, wow. we're working on that. Well, thank you. Thank Thanks you for again. the tour. Appreciate it. Thanks this again. Is, this is Terry Hopkins, Tasting the City. And thank you, Michael, again. And for spirits, where do you come? Cotherman Distilling Company, 933 Huntley, Dunedin, Florida.